Good afternoon, good afternoon. You are live with TST Radio. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. Today is Thursday. So like I said, social media, you know we do our matchups on Thursday and Friday. So today we're going to do some matchups out of the top 25 college football. But before we get into that, we're going to get into some more news. Um, out of the NBA, Derrick Rose, you know, he was caught up in his sexual assault case said that uh, he had sex with a female while she was unconscious. Well, um, I think on yesterday he went to trial. He was found not guilty for that case, saying that he did nothing wrong. The sex was consensual. Um, that's great for him. I know I report, I watched the game on last night, uh, that preseason game. Uh, he will be ready to go. He did not play last night, but he will be ready to go on Tuesday to start to kick off the season on Tuesday. NBA season start on Tuesday. Uh, so that's great for him. Glad that uh, there's so many athletes getting caught up in sexual assault cases, uh, especially black athletes are getting caught up in sexual assault cases. So that's good that he proved himself innocent. In most cases, you would see... Uh, people with the amount of money that Derrick Rose has, he didn't, with the season approaching, most people wouldn't want to deal with the hassle of going to trial, finding a lawyer. Well, I know it's not hard to find him a lawyer, but, you know, going to trial, taking that risk of being found guilty. But he knew he did nothing wrong. He took it to trial. He missed what well, the entire preseason dealing with this situation. Uh, he hasn't been there with his team. He hasn't been getting that chemistry down that they will need to go into this season. So he's missed out on a lot of things dealing with his job, uh, which is playing NBA basketball. Like I said, he missed the entire preseason. So that's time that guys need to bond. You know, they have a lot of new people on that team from the offseason dealing with trades and free agencies and all that type of good stuff. They have a lot of new players that hasn't played together on that New York Knicks team. So they needed this preseason to create that chemistry. But he was fighting this sexual assault case. But it is good that he came out on the positive end of it. He was found not guilty. Like I said, he will be ready to go on the um, kickoff day of NBA basketball, which is Tuesday. Uh, moving on. Get into some baseball. Uh, the I wanted to announce that the Cleveland Indians are headed to the World Series. Uh, Cleveland is having a very good year. If you uh, can recall, the Cleveland Cavaliers just won the NBA title, coming back from a 3-1 deficit from uh, over, over the Warriors. So this is a great, great year for Cleveland. Cleveland has been down since uh, the Browns won the Super Bowl. So, with the Cleveland Cavaliers and Cleveland Indians now making their push to try to win the World Series, I know this is very exciting for people that live in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. So, that's great for them, even though I don't like the Cavaliers nor the Buckeyes, but still, I like to see things happening and positive things going on. Which, uh, when a world that we live in today, every every positive thing I salute. I give kudos to all positive things with living in this crazy world that we're living in right now. So, kudos to Cleveland. Uh, keep it up. Hopefully, y'all pull out this um, World Series and y'all can have another championship celebration. Moving on. Uh, if you can recall, we're going to talk some college basketball. Louisville, you know, they was... Facing sanctions and stuff, they had got into some um, some bad stuff. Um, their basketball team will not face sanctions, that but the NCAA did charge Rick Pitino. They charged him with failing to monitor monitor the program. Um, so that's not good. But it, the Florida Gators defensive lineman um, Brandon Cox, he's a senior. Brandon Cox Jr., which is a senior on their defensive line. He suffered a thumb injury in pregame warm-ups on last week versus Missouri. Um, we don't know what happened to cause him to have this thumb injury. Maybe 
I don't know if he was goofing off, playing around, or actually going through team routines and accidentally hurt his thumb. I don't know. But this thumb injury could take him out the rest of the season. Um, this is a season-ending injury, so I'm, it's very serious. So, I, like I said, I don't know if he was goofing off or anything like that or what not was going on. I don't know. I can't tell you that. But he will. He did face a thumb injury, and it's pretty high chances that he will miss the rest of the season. They sad for him. Like I said, he's a senior. He will miss the, the remaining of his senior collegiate football career. Moving on. Um, it's been talk about Chip Kelly returning to college football. Um, you know he's the head coach at San Francisco, the 49ers. Um, he's not he's not doing what he was doing at Oregon. You know, first he was at um with the Eagles. He tried to implement the fast-paced offense of running the little trickery offense. Um, it's not working in the NFL. Um, it was with Oregon. He had Oregon on a roll. He got him to the national championship versus Auburn, but he lost. Um, NFL executives, they weighed in on the situation. They're, they're saying um, he's just coming in trying to run the same type offense and it's not fooling anyone. Like I said, it's not working anymore. Um, he needs to find either find a new philosophy that will fit him in the NFL or give it up and come back to college football where he prospered at, where he was successful. So he needs to, you know, get it together. Maybe he can, we'll see him back in college football. I think that's the best fit for him. Like I said, his pro Coaching, NFL coaching career is not going. A better fan base than them. Uh, the game will be airing on ESPNU at 6.30 Central Standard Time uh, for all the fans that won't be able to make the trip down to South Alabama. And um, as for the South Alabama game, I think I think we're going to start off the game pretty close. I think we might hit the halftime tied up 21-21. But I do think the final score of the game would be something like Troy 45, South Alabama um, 21 probably, and uh, that I have us at six and one, and we'll have a 4-0 uh, lead in the Sun Belt, which no other Sun Belt team has three wins at this current time. So we're looking pretty good at winning the Sun Belt, and uh, that's all. For which is, uh, I think they're number four now in the a in the country. Um, Louisville, they faced a loss to Clemson in overtime. Earlier in the season. So this will be a great matchup. Um, this will not be an easy game for Louisville. NC State is a very good team. They have a very good rushing defense. They only allowed 95.3 yards this year. Um, coming into this season. So far in this season. But the thing is. is Can NC State stop Lamar Jackson? That is going to be. The the big question, can they stop him from running around that pocket and creating plays? Like I said, they're 95.3, they're uh, allowing on defense and rushing yards. But like I said, Louisville gets their rushing a little more differently than everyone else because their quarterback is their leading rusher. Unlike you have a um, Clemson with, with uh, Goldman, he was their, pretty much their um, leading rusher. When he went down in that game, you saw that NC State stuffed the run and made um, Deshaun Watson win the game with his arm, which almost didn't, didn't happen. So if they can stop Lamar Jackson from the read options and on call and those non-call running plays, if they can stop those plays, I think NC State can win this game. Um, Lamar Jackson is a little more for this game. Finley, um, for NC State, their quarterback, he's coming in throwing over 12, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. 
They have days at the at running back with over 100 carries, 669 yards, four touchdowns. You have Lewis at receiver, 16 receptions, 359 yards. Um, these guys have a total package on offense. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. So this will be a very big test for Louisville's defense. Uh, for Louisville, key players on the offensive side is, uh, of course, Lamar Jackson. He's coming in with over 1,800 people. They like to, you know you know what I'm saying, they like to control the game. They like to have the ball most of the game. So Auburn will have to get some three and outs, get some turnovers. They can't let them win the time of possession. That is a big, big deal in this game, time of possession. You know, Auburn, they kind of score fast. They're a fast-scoring offense. When they don't score fast, they don't do too well. They don't do well in the in, in the red zone. So they're kind of a big play team right now. So if they go out and score fast and give Arkansas a chance to get on this field and control the tempo and let this offense control the tempo, it's less, you could say it's less pressure on him. It's less to think about. That defensive line is not just pinning their ears back, running in and, you know, on the pass rush, so it will give him a lot more time in the pocket if they can get Kerryon Johnson started. Kerryon Johnson and Petway, if they can get those guys going early, this will help Sean White get comfortable um, in this game, and maybe they can pull it out. Uh, I would, me personally, I would like to see Auburn do more misdirection plays. You know what I'm saying? More of the misdirection, more trickery, uh, more of the run play. The run pass option, the RPOs. I would like to see a lot of that. Like what they did with Nick Marshall and Cam Newton. Give them some run pass options. Keep it simple, but give them run pass option. High tempo. These guys will need to tire this defense out. They will need to tire this out and this doing it by having high tempo. Moving the ball. Getting first downs. You can't pitch three and outs. That's allowing Arkansas to control the game. You cannot pitch three and outs. You have to get first downs. You have to convert on third downs. You have on second down. You need to get medium medium yards to set up a third and short, maybe a third and five, third and seven. You do not need to get caught up in third and eights, third and tens, third and fifteen. You do not need to get caught up in that. Penalties will play a very big part in this game. So uh, moving on. Uh, for our last matchup of the day, and we're going to say the rest for tomorrow on the show on tomorrow. We're going to hit um, Texas A&M, Alabama. We're going to hit a lot more games, Some um, the Ohio State game. We're going to hit a lot more games on tomorrow. But getting to our last one for today, we have Ole Miss versus LSU. Uh, high power offense of Ole Miss. They cannot let... Them hit those big plays. They cannot lose Evan Ingram in the in the secondary. They have to know where Evan Ingram is at all times. At all times. You can't just give Chad Kelly wide open receivers. Um, they will need to pound Ole Miss. Um, guys, he will need to have a good game. They need to pound Ole Miss. They need to pound them, get them tired, hold this game to the second half, Win it in the second half. If LSU can keep this game close to the second half, I think they found a way to win. And don't get me wrong, Ole Miss is not a bad team. They've just been finding ways to lose. They come into the games looking good, and they just keep finding ways to lose. So with that being said, um, LSU will need to control this high school football, and we jump into the playoffs. We Tomko will be placing ben, playing Benjamin Russell. Uh, make sure you check us out on our social media, on Twitter, True Sports Talk, Facebook, True Sports Talk Radio. You can hit my personal page up at Marcus Darrell Johnson. Uh, on Twitter, you can hit me up on my personal page at Marcus D. Johnson 4. So uh, make sure you hit us up, follow us, keep up with all your latest high school, college, and pro sports. So that is my time for today. I am your host, Marcus Johnson. Thank you for tuning in.